All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? Today we're gonna try to play the Ashenil deck everybody wants, the one that plays War Leader's Call. And it took a while to figure out what cards work here, but there is an actual new card that I think might help and be pretty interesting here. So, hopping into the list, it's gonna look like what you expect with some of the usual suspects, but we'll talk about the upper end here. But we're starting with Novus Inspector because it makes an artifact, which is gonna be kind of key to what we're doing, and it is a one-two, which isn't bad. Partly because we are going to be playing some Gleeful Demolition and we need to be able to sacrifice some artifacts. Which means we're also going to play Voldaren Epicure, but it does deal a point of damage that works well with Ashenil, so that's totally fine. We can go for the throat for some removal. Blood Tithe Harvester, also for removal, but again, producing an artifact. Oni Cult Anvil. This produces an artifact and makes a creature and deals a damage, so it's going to help us out on a few different fronts. Additionally, we are going to be playing some Wedding Announcement because, well, more tokens, more damage. And then the new card, Comball, Profiteering Mayor. Now, this is an interesting one because if a token enters the battlefield under your opponent's control, you get a copy of that token or those tokens that they make, but it only happens once each turn. However, when one or more tokens enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and gains one life. You gain one life. So, this does mean that if we have three different tokens in our battlefield on our turn, if they came in individually then we would actually get to drain the opponent for a life each time, which is kind of nice. Especially when we're going to play it alongside some Anipakal, because, well, tokens. Now, again, because these tokens all come in at the same time, we'll only get one trigger from Comball, but that's actually okay. And they all work with War Leader's Call, being able to deal the extra damage from Creature Center, and getting an extra plus one, plus one. And then all of this, Comball, War Leader's Call, Oni Cult Anvil, Voldaren Epicure, all work with Ashenil to be able to do extra damage. So hopefully all this comes together and does what we want it to do. But if you want to try this for yourself, as always, there will be a deck link in the description. It'll blue arrows that take it to our Moxfield link and you can see all the sweet decks we've got for standard right now. However, let's go see if this version of Ashenil is actually one to play with War Leader's Call. Oh no, I accidentally just, oh, okay. Well, fortunately I drew a red land because that was about to be a disaster. I just accidentally kept keep without even looking at the hand. Uh, Alright, let's see what the opponent lets us get away with. Oh, interesting. Good news, we do have two Anipa calls, so we could run one out and just see what happens. And, you know, that's fine. Yeah, I think we go ahead and go with one here. Uh, there was an awkward pause there. I'm not sure what that's about. Yep, that works. Okay, now we do have to be careful with a Wandering Emperor to eat Anampakal, because that's a real thing. Oh, that's not what we're doing here. Okay, I thought we were, since we were doing kind of some control -y things with the uh, Sunset Revelry. But that is not the case. Interesting. Oh, and we got a Gleeful Demolition? Oof. Okay, um, we could, you know, let's just go with this for now. And then we'll attack, which makes two two twos here. Dealing some damage. Uh, those do what they're going to do. Opponent blocks the four or five. I'm not going to play the Gleeful Demolition here. Uh-oh. Oh, they have an Elspeth Smite. That's kind of gross, but okay. We have a backup Ashenel anyway. Or uh, Ashenel, backup Anampakal. Uh, That would only be three damage. I'm going to wait because they could have something like a Sunfall or something here. Oh, temporary lockdown. Well, that takes away our artifact, unfortunately. But that's okay. We can live with that. All right, opponent is just kind of letting us do our thing here. So we're going to deal a couple of points. I think now I'm going to go ahead and do this. In case they have a uh, no more lies, we wouldn't... Oh, uh, looks like they don't have any counters. So that's cute. All right. Pass a turn. The opponent's at six. I mean, they might have another temporary lockdown or something here. Nope, that's all we needed. All right, we're going to keep this. No sign of Comball or Ashenel so far. 
Which is all fine and good, I guess. In the grand scheme of things. The sand is still more than playable. Hmm. Let's attack for one and see what happens. Apparently nothing. Guess I'm gonna go ahead and play this. And then I'll try for the only cult anvil next turn. I mean, they could just as well have, like, Brotherhoods end here or something. Nope, just a Brutal Cathar. Uh, that's actually not bad for us, considering our hand. Oh, dang it. I could have played Novice Inspector here if I'd have played that. Uh, lazy. Alright, well, more artifacts for us, I guess. But yeah, definitely missing an attacker now, just from playing too quick there. Because it's not like I can use the uh, Iganjo otherwise, really. What are the odds the opponent has a Wandering Emperor here? I feel like the answer is fairly high. Okay. I can't just, like, not attack. That's not a realistic solution. So if they just have it, they have it. Oh, they didn't. What the hell? Um, okay then, I'm going to go with this. I could have done that pre-combat to get another couple points, but I wasn't sure what they were doing. Oh, there's an Urtai, that's why. Okay, that's fair. Well, either way, we wouldn't have resolved it, and we would have got probably less damage in there, if I were guessing, so. Sure. Still not sure what the opponent's doing here yet. Um, probably... Well, Massacre Girl was not the card I was thinking about. I was actually thinking might have seen like a Rafine or something there. But, uh, this is a thing, I suppose. Alright, I guess we want to kill a Massacre Girl, because, you know, annoying. Go ahead and play one of these. Get our attack in. Sack one of these. Deal an extra point there. All right. So now I feel like even if there's a sweeper, we should still be mostly okay. Uh, Urtai is randomly a human. Okay, how do we want to go about handling business here? Start with this. Everybody's bigger. Yeah, and then we just attack. I mean, if they're blocking, it's as good as me just sacrificing a Harvester anyway, so who cares? Oh, they're just taking four here. Wow. All right. Um, I guess sack one of these. I'm going to have another Harvester here anyway. They go to one. Okay. Okay. And it's got to be it, right? Because there's no card they're going to play for five that gets rid of all this. Okay, cool. Man, I'm going to keep this, but realistically, it might end up being too slow if we're not careful. Because unless I get something that's just red or red-white, like I'm not even going to be able to cast a black spell till turn three. The other trade-off was I could have played this on one and played the Epicure on two, but... You know, that's not solving any problems. Yep, and there's the concern. <laughs> yeah, not good. Um, I guess I'm just going to attack because I'm probably not blocking there, to be honest. I was thinking about what I was going to do, but we're not blocking there. Not realistically, anyway. Yep, that makes sense. All right, so now, oh, we got Comball, though. Damn. Okay, well, now we're in. We got to do it. This is what we came to play, right? Okay. We do have a chance to get a little bit of life off of them. If we could get, oh, gosh, that sucks. Well, we can at least block that, though, this turn. If we can at least get, like, not that. I was thinking maybe the 1-2, the Inspector, we would have been able to get multiple tokens, gain some life. 
Would have been nice. And now I just got to figure out how do we not die from here? We could play Anampakal and attack. That turns Anampakal into a 2 3. They block a token, block one. If we just do this, we have a five and a two, which is okay. But I think I am going to do this. I mean, we'll get a point. So we gain a life. Opponent can block, block if they want, or just block one thing, and that's fine too. We don't really care. All right. Red decks blocking. That's good. That's the information we needed. When the red deck starts blocking, you start feeling a little... Don't get too ahead, but you start feeling a little good about yourself. All right. Anampakal's probably dead here, right? Well, Godric's going to fly, so that's going to suck. But they'll get a token and we'll get a token because of Squee, which is cute. And we'll get a life, which is awesome. Oh, it's funny. Is it because the token... Your opponent control each of them. Oh, creature, a tapped token. Darn it. Okay. Well, we'll block and block. All right, not bad. We're at nine, and we're going to be gaining some life this turn. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Uh. So we play this. We attack, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this will deal four, so that's 12. Damn, we don't quite get there. But you know what? In for a pity, in for a pound. We're going to gain a point of life. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Because we gain a point anyway, so we're at 10. We may have to block something here to, to not die, but that's okay. And if they do anything that makes a token, we also gain a life and deal forward to them. Yeah. I could get used to this little combo. If we get Comball on three and then Ashnil on four, that's kind of cute how that works out. Okay. Uh, we'll keep this because we can at least go Inspector into Gleeful Demolition. It's not a lot, but if we don't draw another land, it'll at least allow us to do something. Ooh, we want another red land our next turn, untapped, right? So we could play Epicure. Oh, ah, show off. Well, we don't have our life gain, so we're probably going to be dead pretty quick here, I imagine. All right. And we didn't get a third land, which isn't helping us. <laughs> so, yeah, we should just be dead here. As I say that, I guess we could get a go for the throat. But without a third land, our hand is looking pretty anemic. I mean, I'll block knowing what's coming, but sure. I mean, we know there's a monstrous rage, right? Nope, there was just a play with fire. Okay, that's fine, I guess. And a lightning strike, okay. I mean, I feel like we could have been more dead. I mean, if that's a thing. Yeah, all right. Opponent's got this, because, like, what's the best we could do here? We could play Oni Cult Anvil, attack. Well, we couldn't even make a 1-1 one -one without sacrificing the Anvil to itself. Yeah, all right. I'm willing to give this one up to the opponent. Plus, there's a chance we're just going to die to the Flyer here. We don't really have much going on. We have to take a point to even cast something. Like, I mean, here's the best we can do. We need it to be a land, right? At a minimum. Um, or a go for the throat if we're somehow not dead. I mean, I guess is the other option. But, yeah, I can't imagine how we, we're not dead here. Yeah, alright. They got us. Yeah, our hand was just bad. Yeah, play whatever you got, opponent. We got nothing. Sure. Yeah, if we'd had to go for the throat or something, we could have still been in it. But, yeah, we just didn't draw anything worth a damn. I mean, sure. Gonna take a little bit of damage, but I guess it's fine. Kind of a part of the process, I guess. 
An interesting thing, too, is depending how your lands come down, the opponent probably thinks you're just like the Boros Tokens deck, and then obviously you end up playing differently than that. However, if we don't find a land, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of anything here. Oh, they're doing some graveyard shenanigans most likely here. They are. All right. Well, question is, can we race them down fast enough? Because I don't know that we can. Especially if we don't find a third land here. All right. I mean, they're filling the graveyard. They're doing everything they want to do. And I'm assuming they have the card they need in hand already, so... We're just going to try to make the most of it. All right. This is just, do they have it? Okay, there's one in the yard. Squirming Emergence was thinking of. If they already have one, though, their graveyard's already at eight, so. All right, they didn't. The question is, what can we do here? Ah, this is tough, because... Hmm. Ah, man. All right. I think I can only attack with one of these. Because I think we need a creature. As much as I want to run down their life total. I feel like we got to try to stick one of these. Maybe I should have done this pre-combat. Because if they had a counter, then it would have been better off to attack with two things there. But it's okay. Okay. More stuff in the yard. Okay. Well, they probably left another worldly, otherworldly what gaze or whatever that thing is, squirming emergence on top. That's uh, I would assume that's the plan. Okay. No, they're playing the one out of the yard. Okay. We got them to ten. So we're not in an impossible situation yet. Well, it's about to get bad though. Because if we were to stick an Ashenel here, that could be pretty big. All right. Fortunately, we still have a go for the throat. So Atraxa is not the end all be all yet here. We're all right. Matter of fact, two, four, six. Uh, we can't kill them yet, but we're not in what I would say bad shape. Oh, they do have another squirming emergence, though. Ah, uh, that's a problem. All right. All right, let's see what we can do. Did not want that. Dang it. Uh, hmm. All right, well, first things first. We got to kill Atraxa. Okay. I mean, I guess we got a little lucky because we only had six damage there. I could have went looking for maybe like seven, eight, but I don't think we had a way to do the last three, but maybe they just assumed we did and that was it. But all right. I mean, we'll take it, but that one I'm putting a little asterisk next to. This is rough, but I'm going to keep it. I probably shouldn't. Ah, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's a third land. Still allows us to do Harvester on two, which is kind of the best thing we were aiming for anyway. And then we can see about setting some stuff up after that. Oh, crap. Why did I play that? That was stupid. I meant to play... Well, Sundown Pass would have been tapped anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. We still couldn't play the Harvester, even if I wanted to. So yeah, no love there. Alright, let's go here. Pass the turn. Yep. And thinking about it, I probably should have just wedding announcement on that previous turn. That was a little bit lazy of me. But alright. Attacking. Didn't flash into the end, which means whatever we play here is likely getting countered, right? No. Really? What's up?
So don't tell me we didn't counter anything. We're not going to kill anything. We're not going to draw. Okay, there we go. That makes sense. Because I was like, there's no way you just do nothing on that turn. That was about to be really weird. Um, okay. Let's try option one. Hmm. That actually worked. Wasn't expecting that, honestly. <laughs> um, let's try this. Okay. I'm not sure I want to attack just yet. Into a Wandering Emperor scenario, but... Um, I guess we do anyway. Right? What's the worst that happens? We're trading a 2-2 two, two for a 2-2? Two, two? Okay. Okay, there's a deluge. Alright. So whatever bad thing's gonna happen to us is about to happen for real here. But it probably starts, I'm assuming, with them at least getting a sweeper. Worst case scenario, they get... Farewell, get rid of everything. Then we get a Novus Inspector back. Maybe we top deck a land and can play War Leader's Call into Ashnel, and that'd be sweet. Or Anampa Call, I mean. But this could just as well just be Sunfall, and we're kind of just doing our thing, I guess. Yep, that makes sense. No real surprises there. We will play another War Leader's Call. And, huh, if I make this, that's six points. Ah, giving up the war, uh, Oni Cult Anvil here is bad. I'm just going to pass. I want to, but I'd rather have it be a surprise here, where we could play, like, Anampakal, try to attack, get some triggers, maybe then Gleeful Demolition for lethal. Because we can also sacrifice the gnome since those are artifacts. Might be our best bet here. But again, this could just be... They're checking graveyards and everything. This might just be farewell about to happen. Where they get rid of everything. Which isn't great for us, but... You know, we don't have any control over it. It's giving it a good think. Oh, you know what, y'all? I could have sacrificed the only called anvil to itself. Oh, is that. Did I mess up? Because that would have been two points, eight points, nine. Oh, no, it only been nine. Never mind. They still wouldn't have been dead. All right, we draw. The question now becomes, how do we lose from here? So I'm assuming you have at least one way to kill a creature. Right? Interesting. Alright, so we're attempting to attack. Opponent's letting that happen. They're taking some damage. Okay. Sure. Yeah, we're good now. That's ball game. Yep, you got it. Sack this since it's going to die anyway. Gets more damage in. Play that. Get damage in. And then get all the rest here. Alright, cool. Not how I thought that was going to go, but man. Oh, not good. We need to mulligan that. This is better. Oh, boy. I guess I'm getting rid of Gleeful Demolition. All right, lead with this duder.
we can anvil for a 1-1, one, one, deal some damage, and then we combo all and try to see if we get our little combo -y situation going. I think it's the best we can hope for here. We did get a fourth land for Ashenol, which is also kind of nice. I gonna say, they could have bounced our clue beforehand, but maybe they'll just bounce our 1-1 one, one so we have no more artifacts. Which, I wouldn't blame them. That'd be a real play. Yep. Totally legit. But maybe they're playing something, I was going to say, that makes tokens, but this does not look like something that would make tokens. That will be helpful later. For now, though, we're just going to attack. All right. Hopefully we get something else to play with Epicure next turn, because I think we kind of want to wait on... I mean, I'll probably go for Ashenel if they're tapped down on blue mana, but if not, I'll probably play something else and try to get Ashenel the next turn, instead of being too greedy here. But if the opponent would be so kind as to make a token for us, that would be great. Brexian, not usually what you want to see. Yep, you got it. They're about to have a ton of mana here. Can we kill them with just Ashenel? Hmm, maybe. Maybe. They just got white mana. I don't know if that means they have... Oh, Bushwhack? Dang it. Oh, that's so bad for us. That Bushwhack is really good for them. That's tough. Alright, well... If their plan is to just play... What's your name? Atraxa next turn. Oh, boy. Alright, I think we just gotta do it. I mean, if they have more removal, they have more removal. All right, there's an Atraxa. All right, so the question becomes, let's say we were to get a War Leader's Call. How much damage could we do? We could do one from this is four. The War Leader's Call is eight. One from the Oni Cult Anvil is 12. The creature coming in is 16. That's not quite enough. Damn, that is so close, though. Oh, all right. Well, we're dead anyway. All right. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I guess we keep this. Can't think of a good reason to throw this back. I'm going to go ahead and go with this. Even though it's a point, I want to see if we can try to attack oppo against opposing 1-1s one here. All right. That kind of worked out anyway, as we're able to just play both of these little duders. Alright, need an untapped land here, deck. Which should be all of them, I think. Or not. <laughs> That's the other option. Okay. I'm just going to crack a clue here, because I'm not going to cast anything else, so I might as well spend the mana. See if we find a land. We didn't. Wow. That's hurtful. Brotherhood's Inn is real rough right now. Okay, they didn't. They're doing some tumbleweed action, but they do get to put the desert onto the battlefield. Why do I feel like we're going to be facing down like a Terror of the Peaks next turn? <laughs> Fortunately, we have a go for the throat. Roxanne does get to off a 2-2, sadly. I'm a fan of that card, though. Um, Yeah, it's not any better for us to do anything else here. Let's just kill that. We'll attack for four. 
go ahead and I mean, if we do this, opponent go. Yeah, we just do this and then try to win with a uh, Ashenel next turn, right? Even if they sweep the board. All right, in the turn. Yep, that's all right for us. I mean, they still have two mana. But they are at two. Alright. Not sure what else could happen here, but... We'll see. Well, alright then. <laughs> Back with all of it? I'm gonna gain some life or something here? Those do tap for two mana, so that is a legit thing. Um, that wrecks our plan. However, they could have played that in response to us playing a national anyway, so. Okay, it didn't even matter. No oh, man. I think we have to mulligan this. That's just too slow. This one we can keep. Question is, what do we keep? Um. Wow, am I really gonna... I can't get rid of wedding announcement here. I guess I have to do this. That feels kind of gross, though. Well, that's not helping us any. Alright. I'm just playing the Haunted Riz there, just to leave options open. Next turn, we can just play our two one ones anyway, and all we do is really miss out on one point of damage. But, if they would have played something I wanted to kill, would have been nice to be able to have access to uh, go for the throat. But easily could have played Epic Hero on one, played Novice Inspector on two, still have the board look the same and be plus one damage on the opponent. Andra. Oh, that is not the card we were expecting. So it's getting untapped land, so we can just run right into Chandra and kill her deck. Oh, are we going to lose a creature? No. Okay, we did find the untapped land, so that helps. Step one, get rid of Chandra. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna attack with just one. Oh, they want to get rid of the war leader's call. All right, that's fair. Less damage for them, makes sense. All right. So we have all the tokens. Uh, no point. We'll just take it. They gain some life. That's fine. Alright, found another war leader's call. And this time we are just attacking all out. We'll take the card. Alright, I say digging toward a land is one of the things we wanted there. Totally fine. And we are not in bad shape here, I will tell you that. Let's go... 2, 4, 6. Yeah, we might as well. They just top deck a sweeper, so be it. Alright. No, oh, that's not a bad follow-up, though, even if they do have a sweeper. We're good. And that's 7 plus lethal in hand anyway. Right? No, it's not. That's three, four, five, actually. Uh, sure. Just take three. Okay, cool. Oh, gosh. Yeah, let's keep it. Why not? Okay, we found a third land, so that's good. Uh-oh. They want our Epicure dead. Alright, so this is kind of interesting. I think we play this, but don't use it yet. 
Mostly because we can use the other Oni Cult and get two duders. Yeah, they make us discard here. We don't care that much. Like, it's annoying, but meh. Alright. I think plan here is just play the other Oni Cult Anvil. And then we'll go ahead and turn this into two creatures. Pass the turn. Oh no. Really? Ah, oh, bruh. Are you kidding? Alright, we're gonna get rid of this because we're about to lose all of our permanents. Oh, that sucks. This is everything. Oh no, it has to be for oil counters. Sacrifice, destroy each non land with mana equal to. Oh, okay. So we got a while then. I was thinking it was the other one. Uh, yeah, okay. And I guess we just attack. Back one. Ding the opponent a few times. Alright. Put an oil counter on. Sure. Now can we do enough in the next couple of turns? Okay, there's a shielded. Speeds up the clock, but uh, not crazy. All right. Draw. Fair enough. And then I think here we're going to be send two into Liliana. I mean, doesn't really matter what we do with the rest of it, right? Oh, no, that's not true because we have other tokens coming at the opponent. I totally forgot. I should have attacked with the other two, too. We missed a chance to get two points of damage in. Oh, they're not blocking anyway. Lucky for us. Is this everything equal to or less than? Equal with mana value equal to the number. Oh, okay. So that didn't even matter at all. Uh, Get rid of this gnome, I guess. All right, well, we definitely have more than lethal next turn. I mean, even if they get a removal card here. Because they'd have to get rid of War Leader's Call at this point. Though they could get rid of Anampa Call. Well, it doesn't matter. All right, uh, there's a couple of things with this list. Like, one... I don't think I enjoyed this as much as just either being creature heavy outright and playing War Leader's Call or being more spell heavy and playing O'Hare Ashenel. I still think those are two kind of better split options. However, the things we got to do did work, so I'm not too upset about them. The downside, though, is I think we're trying to squeeze in a lot of things where we have like Oni Cult Anvil, Wedding Announcement, Anampa Call, War Leader's Call, right? I almost feel like the Wedding Announcements should be some number of duress and or go uh, maybe some other removal, you know, and it could be a, probably a few different things. But I think you want to be able to still deal with the opposing tokens decks and just having a duress doesn't do much unless they're playing like War Leader's Call, but if you have even something that picks off an early creature, like that would be totally fine if you want to put that in the spot. However, the creature removal is going to be bad against the control decks, whereas the duress will actually be better. So it's almost like, what do you think you're worried about the most? And then I would replace those with three and two, three and one, or maybe even two and two of duress plus the other thing. Because like cut down would be totally fine in that spot as well. 
But the tough part is you kind of need all this other stuff that like makes the artifacts, has cheap creatures, just so everything does what it's supposed to do. But the wedding announcement is still just a nice card. So if you're looking to do this, this is probably the way I would play it. I would say Comball actually was pretty sweet, did some fun stuff, gained some life. It was super nice. But again, I don't know. I feel like this still needs some refinement, but it wasn't bad for what it was. But the list I'm going to post up is three Novus Inspector, four Gleeful Demolition, four Voldaren Epicure, three Go for the Throat, four Blood Tithe Harvester, four Oni Cult Anvil, four Wedding Announcement, two Comball Profiteering Mayor, three Anim Pakal Thousandth Moon, four War Leaders Call, three O'Hare Ashenol, and a Ganjo, a Plains, a Swamp, a Mountain, a Sakinzen, three Caves of Koilos, two Shattered Sanctum, three Black Cleaf Cliffs, two Haunted Ridge, two Battlefield Forge, one Inspiring... Actually... Four Inspiring Vantage, but mine are just split up over different types. And one Sundown Pass. But again, I would say if you want to, swap out the wedding announcements for some number of duresses and or cutdowns. And that might help out a little bit. Especially since the list is already skimping on mana to begin with. I will say though, Thunder Junction, bringing a lot of cool stuff to the table. And if you were already playing the Angels deck, there's a couple of new cards that fit right in that actually worked really well. So check out that video. But that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.